Hi, I'm Scott Blossom, and this is a few minutes about superfoods. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my background is that I have a biology degree, and I've also practiced traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine for 25 years almost. And um, in my world, the question of superfoods comes up with some regularity. And um, it's something that I read a long time ago that never left me was that the one food that anybody has ever lived on solely for a year, and this has been researched under laboratory conditions twice, is potatoes. And uh, it was the research was done in Germany. And so um, on the subject of superfoods, I think potatoes need to be mentioned because they're the only thing that anybody's ever actually existed on as their only food source that we know of without coming into really significant um, nutritional deficiencies. And I'm not advocating that anybody try to live on potatoes, but it's just to kind of put an opening statement on the fact that superfoods is a label that's often used to market uh, food products that are considered to be particularly dense. And I'm thinking of things like spirulina or chlorella or certain um, um, fruits like goji berries or something like that. And these, and so this idea is that a superfood is something that's particularly dense in nutrition. But I heard this definition about like, well, um, having a lot of something is fine, but can you live on it? And so I think it's really important to note that, especially in light of microbiome research, um, what we're really coming to understand is that eating seasonally, eating a diverse diet of plant foods, i.e. foods that have fiber, and that would include everything from mushrooms to seeds and nuts to fruits and vegetables, legumes, grains, you know, whatever you can digest well, um, is really, really important to making you healthy. And so um, the way I would define a superfood is that there's some foods that have greater concentration of nutrients of a certain kind. So a superfood is going to be defined relative to the person who's consuming it. And for the purposes of this little discussion, I'm gonna give two examples. Um, on the one hand, as I also already mentioned, is something like a goji berry. Um, I should say with spirulina and chlorella too, that they're just wonderful when you look at the broad spectrum of, food, of, of nutrients, including protein, including essential fatty acids, including B vitamins, um, you know, just ounce for ounce, they're just really, really dense sources of plant-based nutrition. And um, in the case of something like a goji berry, um, it turns out that goji berries are, are high in some antioxidants that are particularly good for your eyes. And that's only one of their benefits. They're also a longevity food. They're an immune boosting food. But the thing I wanna key in on, and I think this is one of the defining qualities of a superfood is that the goji berry is very high in something called zeaxanthin. And relative to other zeaxanthin um, containing foods, and you can think along the lines of some squashes, root vegetables, um, goji berries are off the charts, like 50 times more than any other food. So that's pretty super in my you know, estimation, especially if you're somebody who's exposed to a lot of sunlight, like say you're somebody who works outdoors or you're, you know, river, work on water, for example, or around water a lot, where you're gonna get a lot of glare or you're working in snowy conditions during the winter time. Um, and so then another example is something like the flaxseed. And so of all the seeds and nuts, they all have incredible properties when they're you know, in a good condition. But it turns out that flax seeds have something called lignans. And lignans are, um, they're, they're well known as something that can benefit things like your beauty, like your skin, hair, and nails. But they're also really well known and actually quite a bit of research exists too about um, flaxseed lignans being responsible or lignans in general being responsible for um, helping to protect us from certain kinds of cancer, especially cancers like breast and prostate cancer. So you could call those cancers of reproductive organs. And, um, and so again, it, it turns out that while a lot of foods contain lignans, 
flax seeds have something like 800 times more lignans, you know, ounce for ounce than other foods that contain lignin. So if you think that lignans are important for you, especially if you're somebody who's over 45 and wants to protect their reproductive health, um, as well as what I've discovered too, is the way flax seeds are structured, they're really, really excellent for regularity and helping to balance um, motility in the gut and bowel movements. Um, something like taking a couple of tablespoons of ground flax seeds per day um, imparts some fairly well-documented protection against certain kinds of cancers. And, um, and again, um, you need to identify if that's who you are. So hopefully this is helpful. And um, again, you know, just because somebody says something's a superfood, there always has to be a kind of, um, you know, what context are you referring to it is. Like recently I saw that oats were being listed as a superfood. And yeah, I think a lot of people think that oats are pretty super, but what would you say about wheat or rice or barley? If you're a grain lover and you can digest grains, then why would those other ones be lesser than oats? So I think that the, the, the phrase is being thrown around in a way that we need to be a little bit um, careful with. But at the same time, there are some foods that are more concentrated in certain kinds of nutrients. And if they're ones that you need and would benefit from, then those foods could be legitimately, legitimately called superfoods for you. And that's the key with both traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, that we're always thinking about how something relates to an individual the timing of their life and the specific needs that they have. So I hope that has been helpful to you and, um, and thanks for listening.